boom, burgers on. About a year ago, we were taking our first trip in our new RV, and we're at Crooked River State Park in Georgia. We're cooking on that campsite grill using charcoal briquettes, and we had an epic chicken cooking fail. The chicken was just so high above the barbecue briquettes that it just wouldn't cook. It just was on there for like an hour. It wasn't even nearly cooked. Luckily, we had made friends with our neighbors, Richard and Bonnie Buchanan, because they're also grand designers. And we shared our problem cooking with them and they were gracious enough to let us finish cooking our chicken on their Coleman grill. After that experience, we never wanted to rely on a campground grill again. So when Alice and I put together a list of our requirements for our RV barbecue. First of all, it had to be a compact design that mounted to the back of the RV and didn't take up any space in our basement. It had to heat up quickly and have enough cooking area for uh, cooking a meal for Alice and I. Now, we also wanted it to have its own propane source because uh, our RV does not have a line at the back of the RV to connect it to a barbecue. Now, it also had to be a grill that created those little grill marks that Alice wants on her burgers and her chicken. Now, while doing research for this perfect grill, I came across a video from one of our favorite YouTubers, Mark from Grand Adventure, and he did a video on attaching a marine kettle grill with a ladder attachment to the back of his RV. I'll put a link up here to a link to Mark's video. Now, knowing that I could trust Mark's recommendation for this grill and my own experience with the Magma brand by using their 10-piece nested gourmet cooking set that I had for my Class B, I got online and ordered this Magma kettle grill and the arm and the cover immediately and couldn't wait to attach it to the back of my RV. Now we have been cooking on this grill for over a year and we cook on it a lot. We grill at least twice a week. We're talking fish and chicken and burgers and steak. If it can be cooked on a grill, we've cooked it on this thing. And you can see this thing has seen a lot of action. I did a really thorough cleaning today to do this video, but still you can see it has done a lot of grilling in that time. Now the trick to cooking on this little grill is not to cook too fast and too hot. Now it has a really good regulator here. You can cook between low and high. And for chicken and fish, I recommend heating it up, getting it really hot on high, but when you start cooking, turn it down to low to medium and just give the chicken and fish time to cook. Keep that lid closed and let it cook. Now for burgers and steak, you can crank it on high and really grill it at that super hot heat to get that uh, flavor and that, that grilling burn that you want, make those little grill marks, um, cook it up on high. Now, as far as cleaning goes, it's really easy to clean. Now, if you cook with a lot of marinades and barbecue sauces like we do, it gets dirty down in the bottom of the bar barbecue pretty quickly, so you have to clean it more often. If you don't, if you let that stuff accumulate at the bottom, it just does not cook evenly enough. It messes with the burner and how the flame comes out, and you'll get hot spots on it, so you gotta keep it clean. But it's really easy to clean. It just, I'll show you how quickly you can take this apart. The grill comes apart that quickly. You take out the radiant plate, you unscrew the burner, just like that. You take out the flame, you take off the bowl, and you can just clean the whole thing just like that. Take it out and scrub it to put it back on. You just put it back on real quickly like that. Most of the debris accumulates at the grease plate at the bottom. And that quickly, you can take it apart, clean it, and put it back together. Now, after you've finished grilling, storing it away is really quick and easy. And I'm just gonna run through the procedure real quickly. First of all, of course, make sure this thing is ice cold before you, you store it away. You don't want it leaning up against the RV or putting the cover on it while it's still hot. So make sure that the grill is nice and cold. You just rotate the regulator and pull that off of the Venturi tube. Unscrew the regulator from your tank. Store those separately. You unscrew the knob at the bottom of the Venturi tube and that just comes off like that. You could probably leave that on. I always take it off because I'm always worried about it loosening as we're traveling down the road and then falling off. Once you have that, then you can move the grill into position. So you just loosen it like this. You can change the height. I keep mine up high enough so it doesn't block my tail light. And right now I got this little rubber pad I put back here so that I could press it against the RV. I'll show you a little clip of 
how I put that against the RV. So basically I just get it up to the height that I want where it's going to um, press against there. Put it like that. I take my cover. Now this is a magma cover that I got from Amazon. They're actually expensive, but it's made with real Sumbrella. I think it's like 50 bucks. I pull it around like that. I pull the drawstring so it's nice and tight. I tighten the drawstring cord. And then what I do with that is I tie the, this around the ladder up above so that if the barbecue falls off, it's still gonna be held in the bag or whatever, I forgot to loosen it or something. Once it's, um, I got that tied on there, I loosen the handle, I press it against the RV nice and tight, I press it against it, and then I tighten the handle just like that. So now it's pressed and it's super tight against the RV. I don't want to worry about it having coming off. I've had this on this RV like that for a year and it's worked great. Now the only custom thing I've done with my barbecue besides putting this rubber pad back here to keep the barbecue from rubbing against the RV was I used this stainless steel cable to attach the barbecue as a little safety device so that for some reason I forgot to tighten it down or somehow or another it got loose and fell off the RV, this safety cable would catch it. It's just a stainless steel cable. I run it through the hinge, between the bowl and the hinge. I wrap it around the ladder. Then I take a simple cable lock, which I got from Lowe's. I've got the cable and the cable lock from Lowe's. I just run it through the cable lock and then I just tighten these nuts down. Now with this cable lock on here, I don't have to worry about the whole bowl coming off and falling down and you know causing damage to a car on the highway. Okay, I'm gonna go over a brief installation of this barbecue, it's very easy. The first thing you do is you take the arm and you take the, your appropriate sized arm and attach it to your ladder just tighten the lever till it's nice and snug and put it in the approximate position that where you're gonna have your barbecue. The next step is to take the bottom portion of the barbecue, which they call the grease tray, and we're gonna install this upside down. You're going to attach the L bracket with the part that attaches to the rod, and you're gonna put it over the knurled section, and you're gonna use two 9 16 inch wrenches and get this really nice and snug. You're gonna get this book. 80% tight to where your final position, you still want to be able to nudge it into position. And then you're going to make it as horizontal as possible attached to the rod. After this, we're going to take the uh, rod off of the ladder and we're going to flip it over. This is actually the normal position where you're going to attach the barbecue. Next, we're going to attach the lid to the bowl. Now the set comes with two screws and two nuts. You just put the screw through and then there's a little spot for the nut to be placed between the bowl and the flange that holds the nut. Now, all you have to do is take the included 3 16 inch hex screw and get it nice and snug. It's a self-locking nut, so you might have to just turn it back and forth to get it adjusted to the stiffness that you would like the lid to open and close. Next, we're gonna assemble the barbecue by putting the bowl over the grease plate, put it to the angle that you like, attach the flame deflector, Put the burner over that. Now the burner screws down over the flame deflector and then tightens the whole barbecue together. That's actually what holds everything together is the burner. Next, you're gonna put the radiant plate over top of that. It just sits in place. And then you're gonna put your 13 inch grill in and it just rotates into place and locks into the little teeth that are in the bowl. All we have to do now is attach the Venturi tube to the bottom of the grease plate, just screws into place. Then we take our regulator, just line up the notch and rotate it into place. Now we're going to screw on our one pound propane tank. It just threads onto the bottom of the regulator. They're just going to let it fall into place. We're going to push down on the regulator knob until it goes into the high position. We're going to take an extended lighter, stick it into the barbecue and light it up. Now why is this the perfect barbecue for us? Well, first of all, it is really nice and compact and the way that it attaches the ladder is awesome. It doesn't affect our stair use at all. It's very easy to use and set up. It stays clean while traveling with the attached cover. Um, it cooks a surprising amount of food. This little 13 inch grill, we cook uh, four chicken breasts. We slice them in half. That's eight pieces of chicken on here and it cooks it no problem and it cooks them all really nice and evenly. 
Um, you don't have to worry about that as long as you use the proper heat and don't cook too fast. Um, you can adjust the height of the grill depending on the height of the RV. Now, when we level, depending on the spot that we're at, it may make the RV high or low. And being able to adjust the height to where we need it, where I like to cook, is pretty awesome. Now, this thing is built to last. It's all stainless steel. It's made here in America uh, with an, from an American company. It's relatively inexpensive uh, comparing, uh, comparing to other grills that are on the market out there. And using it is relatively inexpensive. Those little green Coleman can uh, canisters, you know, they last a long time. We get three or four meals out of each one at about four to five bucks a canister. It's really been an awesome grill for us and a workhorse. We hope to get many more years of use out of this grill while we still have this RV. Well, thanks for watching this video where we share our experience with this awesome little Magma Marine Kettle Grill. If you're looking for the perfect grill for your RV, you really need to take a look at one of these Magma grills. Now, I'll leave links in the description for the grill, the arm that attaches to the ladder, and the cover. Now, I originally came across this grill from Mark's video from Grand Adventure, and I'll leave a link to his video up here. Now, if you like this kind of content, we do lots of reviews of RV products, campground reviews, RV DIY. Please consider subscribing to our channel to a link down here. I'm also going to leave a link to a playlist of some similar content up here, so you can watch that next. But please remember, downsizing does make sense.